All right, back with another one. So the T3i in 2020, this camera is soon to be 10 years old and it is super cheap if you buy it used. Uh, you can also get cheap new, but so many people have bought this camera like eight, 10 years ago that you can find one for really cheap. I actually bought mine for about $200. And that was probably the best uh, investment in videography, gaming, tech, whatever you want to call it, that I've uh, made. It's, I've put so much use into this camera, it's actually kind of sickening, uh, in a good way. So I'm going to go over the key things on how to utilize this camera. I'm going to go over the stuff that makes it good, but I'm also going to go over the stuff that makes it bad, because this camera has some insane limitations that if you're gonna buy this you should really really be aware because for a couple hundred bucks more you can get stuff that the quality won't be better but the user interface will be a little bit easier so i'm gonna go over those key differences but if there's one thing i have to say about this camera that i think every person that wants to get into whether it's photography videography uh making youtube videos making twitch stuff using it as a webcam this camera will force you to learn good lighting, uh, how the settings in your camera work. I personally don't do photography, I only do video graphy, but uh, this applies what I'm gonna say about this camera to both of them. So before we go, this is just a couple of scenes that I had shot on this camera. I think at the time I didn't really know the settings as good as I know them now, but this is me doing videos with less knowledge than I have now, and these came out really cool. Those are two intros to the channel. Uh, you've probably seen them before, so I've worst skipped this part, but this is the power of the T3i, uh, if you can get creative. So let's check those out. So tip number one, and this is more of an investment, is the lens to this camera is absolutely horrible. Um, if you're doing photography, you can get by with it, but if you're gonna do any form of video stuff, I would say that this camera is, uh, this lens, pardon me, is not good at all. Uh, it's super noisy, like just, just using this, you can, and you know what, I'll, I'll show you guys an example. I'll use the, the automatic focus with this on the camera. You'll see what I'm talking about. Now, as you can see, I am out of focus. And just to show you to what point this lens makes a lot of noise. So if you're like thinking of vlogging or anything of the sort, or you just want to use the, the, the focus button, the autofocus while filming, here's why I think you should probably get a pancake lens. So smooth, like butter. <laughs> yeah, let's go back to the pancake lens. Um, for a couple hundred bucks, you can get a really good pancake lens. That's what I use for all my videos. Um, I would not get a pancake uh, lens though if you're doing photography necessarily, because uh, it's nice to have those different, uh, the flexibility to have different focal lengths. But if you're doing video and you know you're gonna be kind of in a fixed spot or you're gonna be moving manually a lot, I would say a pancake lens, uh, I would recommend it. Uh, the two pancake lenses that I have are the 24 millimeter and I have the, if I remember correctly, the 40 millimeter. Now, the T3i is a crop sensor, so my 24 millimeter lens is actually like, I, uh, I don't remember, it's, um, I'll put it right here. But it's, uh, yeah, so it's quite a bit zoomed in, uh, which I actually like. I find that very, very useful. And if I ever do upgrade to a full uh, frame uh, camera, 
then I'm gonna have those nice big wide shots and I can switch to my 40 millimeter. So I kind of have two options to work on. Now, the next one is lighting. Uh, when I first got this camera, I had no clue what f-stop was, what ISO was, what uh, shutter speed was. I had no clue. I just, I bought myself a deal. DLSR saying, hey, this is a good camera, I'm gonna put good use to it. And my first couple of videos I ever shot with this are so bad. And it's, it's not only were the settings completely off, I had a filter on that I didn't even know I could take off. Now, I'm not saying everybody's gonna be as stupid as I was, but you, you may be as dumb as me. It's the hard truth, but you may be as dumb as me. So, this being said, I'm gonna go over the couple steps to what I find makes a really nice uh, lighting, just video quality in general. So, if you watched other videos before, these three basic rules will automatically make your video so much better. And so many videos on the internet will tell you these three things. So, if you're not doing these three things to make your videos better, then I don't know how to do it. So, this being said, number one is your aperture. Now, I like to have that blurry background, I think it's called Mimoka or something, and um, our polka. And uh, to do that, you just take your f-stop and you have to put it completely to the smallest number, which means that it's letting in the most amount of light. Um, this being said, it will give you like what you can see here where the background is really blurry but I'm super in focus. The second thing is ISO. Now ISO is kind of like a double-edged sword. It will give you fake light as some people call it, but it's gonna cost you your grain quality. So I would say in my, just this is my personal opinion, once again I'm not a professional or anything like that, it is for fun, you should have your ISO as low as possible. Now, that's not a strict rule, like you want to have good lighting, and if you can't get it from whatever your source is, that's okay. But if you can have good lighting like I have here, my ISO currently is at 100, which is the lowest. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the different lights just to show you at what point that having a conscious mind of your lighting around you is really going to help you. So I'm going to do that in just a moment. And we're back. So basically what I've done now is I've put my ISO completely to the highest, which is 6400. I've put my shutter speed completely high. I don't remember the exact number, but it doesn't really matter. And for this case, I've actually put my aperture to the uh, to the smallest number, so the most uh, light in, so that we get that nice blurry background. Um, this is probably what I would have done at the beginning. I had no clue what ISO was, so I was like, well, more light, the better the video is going to look. And as you can see, this isn't the worst in the world, but it's definitely grainy. Um, and the lighting is just not that good. I actually turned off some of my lights, uh, so I have no backlight now, which is actually something I just started doing recently. Um, and I have no side light here. I only have one back with a little bit of natural light and one um, one uh, big light in its, uh, what's it called? The, just one light in the background. So working from here, first thing I would do is let's turn our ISO completely down to get rid of that grain. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. All right, so I've turned my ISO down. As you can see, it is super, super dark. We can't see anything. So I'm actually gonna turn on some external lights. So magic, just like that. So I have a small light coming here, still not good enough. I'm gonna go turn my back light on. Just give me one second. I will be back. All right, so still a little bit better. We have a little bit of contrast coming here, giving me that nice outline but it's still not making the cut. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to change my shutter speed. I'm actually gonna bring it up, but before I do that, I just want you guys to notice something. See how I'm moving my hand? It really doesn't look natural. Well, I'm gonna put it side by side just to show you a little bit of the difference. So not good shutter speed. It's, there's no motion blur, it doesn't look natural. So now I'll try happens when I turn my shutter speed. So I'm gonna put it around here. This is 160. So if I was filming in 60 frames per second, this would 
look a little bit better, still not supernatural. So let's bring it up and oops, I'm bringing it down. And I am now shooting 30 frames per second. And this is what it looks like. As you can see, it's highly overexposed. Um, so let's see what my ISO is at. You guys can't see this, but it is, it's at ISO 400. So my favorite thing to do, let's bring it down to 100, a little bit too much. So now we're gonna utilize it. I put a little bit of extra light in there. This is looking a little bit better. And if I'm not mistaken, my f-stop, yes, my f-stop is, is completely up. So this is the original video. So what did I do? I utilized good lighting. I turned my f-stop up. That's a personal choice. You don't have to do that. I want to get a nice blurry background, need to focus. And the third thing I did was my shutter speed. So even though we're shooting in video, it's not exactly like in a camera where the mirror flips up and all that, but it's still really important that your shutter speed is at a good setting. And the basic rule is, I'm currently filming in 30 frames per second, so you just want to double that. So it's very simple if you're filming in 30 frames per second, your shutter speed should be twice that, so 60. If you're shooting in 24, it should be 48. If you're shooting in 60 frames per second, it should be 120. And anyways, we all know how to do times two multiplication. It's not complicated. So if you follow these three rules, your video will go from looking pretty much like this. Hey, um, so I uh, decided to make a YouTube channel to this. So the other thing I've noticed with this camera is that it looks really good on stuff that is closer to it. Um, I'm not sure why, maybe it's something to do with the mechanics of it. I can't actually tell you, but it does really good. So like even in this shot where you see something is a lot closer, everything looks a little bit more crisp. So it probably has to do with the focal length and maybe where it's the best. Don't really know, but that's something to take into account. Now, talking about this uh, camera and the different good stuff and bad stuff to it, I want to just go over some of the stuff I really like about this camera in the terms of like when you physically hold it and you use it. So some of the stuff that I find really, really good is one, an audio jack. So you can, or a mic jack, pardon me. You can plug in a mic and have the good audio like we just saw. Um, to me, this is a non-negotiable for any camera that you're thinking of doing video with, at least for me. I mean, you can always do it externally, but I'm lazy. I want everything in one shot, make it simple. The second thing I've noticed that I really like about Canon cameras, in fact, is I can pretty much do all my settings with one hand and I can get all my settings. I got my eyes on top. I've got my f-stop. I've got my all the kind of other uh, stuff like frame rate or uh, all kinds of stuff you know if you want to put different white tones or whatever I can do it all from here which for me is really important I love that uh, the other thing that I really like is the fact that you can take the flip screen out and flip it so if you're filming yourself you can do that if you're filming something where you're uh, let's say you're trying to get a really low angle and you don't want to have to get on the ground to look you just flip it out and you look at the bottom same thing you can take a high up shot it really gives you a bunch of creative um, abilities like you're not you're not limited and for me that's really important i really like that so this marks the halfway point of the video there is no sponsor today for this one so i'm just going to do your classic pitch if you're enjoying the video uh, hit the like subscribe button and uh, if you know anybody that are trying to find an entry level camera share this video with them and I hopefully this goes like with the editor video that got like, I think it was like 60K or whatever uh, for the, um, the uh, PlayStation headset. Hopefully, I'm hoping that we get a lot of uh, engagement and questions on this one. And as anyone who's seen my editor videos, you know, if you have a question, I read every single comment and I try to respond to every single one. Uh, there's even people who make fun of me in the comment section saying that I'm the only uh, I don't like calling myself a YouTuber, but the person who makes videos, who responds to uh, questions six months later to two years later. 
but that's the whole reason. It's not a full-time job. I really do this because I enjoy it. It's fun. And I've been lucky enough to have really good teachers who have helped me. And I'm not a teacher, but if I can help other people with tech-related things and video games, uh, you know I will do it. So hit the sub button, show some love, and uh, yeah, let's get back to the video. Now, I would say this tip is probably the most important tip of all the tips I've given is audio. So I've actually struggled with audio for a very, very long time now because for some reason, every time I film, there's always so much background noise and it completely drives me nuts. So we can edit it in post-production, but I have a tip that makes it a lot easier and it's instead of using programs to get rid of background noise, what if we just never had that background noise? So very simple things like my computer, I turn it off now because it makes too much noise. Um, I don't put lights super close to my microphone because it creates a little bit of interception and it can make a little bit of that extra noise. Just like when you put neon lights, you kind of hear that buzz. Cameras can pick that, I mean, sorry, microphones can pick that up. So I try and bring everything away. And I haven't done this yet in my apartment, but eventually I do want to put a couple of sound boards just to grab a little bit of that extra sound. This being said, I'm going to show you a comparison. Right now I'm using a Rode Video mic. I'm going to show you what it sounds like if you don't use a mic at all. And spoiler alert, it sounds like crap. So let's go ahead and show you what happens when I plug my mic. And I'm back. So this is the audio quality with no mic. This is the camera's audio quality. And yeah, so I don't know how bad it is. I'm gonna only find out afterwards, but from my previous experience, it has always been a super bad audio quality. So this is me with no mic. Let's switch to me with a mic. So this is me, I'm back, and I have plugged my mic in, and hopefully, the sound quality is a lot better. So the next thing now that as you can notice is this is completely out of focus. Now, one of the main problems I have with this camera is the fact that it doesn't, it has autofocus, but you have to hold down the uh, shutter button. You have to hold it down halfway for it to, um, to film you, to, to, to hold focus. And it, it has face tracking, but you manually have to pull down on the button. Which is why I use this little guy. Now I actually don't have my glasses on, so I don't actually know if this is focused or not. Now I got this off of Amazon. It's not super, super expensive. I think I paid maybe like 10 bucks for it. And what this does is when you go on this side here, when you go on this side here, as you can see, you have two buttons here. So button number one will pull focus. And it'll take a picture. Now button number two, which I'm not gonna press now because it will stop my recording, but button number two is going to start recording or stop recording. So this $10 device, $20, I really don't remember, I'll put a link in the description. This little device here has made my life so much easier because I used to manually pull focus. So I would pull focus on the chair and then try and be like, okay, my head's maybe like, I don't know, like five inches from the chair, Let's pull it a little bit back and then I would film, look, put it on the computer, see if I'm focused because I can't reach the camera now. And if I pull focus here, like, okay, this is, this is where we're gonna film. But when I come back here, I'm probably out of focus now, just a little bit. So let's compare the two. So this is me manually focusing compared to the camera using face track. Taking the picture, but still pulling focus on. So this little device, super, super useful. I would say this is a non-negotiable -nego essential for the T3i in 2020 or 2021 soon. This is why sometimes you notice my videos I often go like this. This turns it off. Let's talk about the things I don't like. Because as I said in the beginning of this video, there's a lot of things I don't like about this camera. 
So, the most obvious one, which I already mentioned before, is the fact that you manually have to hold down. So yeah, we talked about this little gadget here, but it really, it really does become annoying having to uh, constantly focus with your finger, unless you've got this obviously. But uh, for me, that, that, that's something I really don't like. And I wish there was some kind of firmware update or something that would allow it to do that. But I guess they're just, I don't know, it must, it must be, it's, an, it's almost a 10 year old camera, so it's understandable. Um, the other thing I really don't like is the LCD uh, screen. So right now I'm looking at myself and I say, this looks really good, the quality looks good. And then I put it on my computer and everything is underexposed. So I find that really annoying. I almost want to buy an external monitor that has like the proper light of what I'm going to see on my computer, just so that I can know what this is actually going to look like and I can get my settings good. So I didn't do it for this video, but normally, let's say now I'm at 200 ISO, um, I'm gonna bump it up to 400 or a little bit higher just to try and get it good. Or maybe I was at 100, I don't remember. But anyways, I always put it a little bit higher than what I think is gonna be good and it ends up being nice and crisp on my computer. So another issue I have with this camera, but honestly considering the price and how old it is, I feel a bit bad complaining about this, but it's the battery life. Um, I don't know how many times I can say, maybe it's because I'm shooting video, so you know, you constantly have your screen on, it drains more battery, but I have to charge these batteries like so, so, so much. I could get a battery grip, but I really don't want to spend money on that. Um, I'm constantly charging my batteries, like my camera usually lasts probably one battery, maybe 45 minutes, if I'm lucky to an hour, if I'm taking pictures longer i haven't tested it but i know it's longer because it doesn't drain the battery when i'm doing video it's it's pretty frustrating so that sums about it up for this video um do i recommend the canon t3i rebel in 2020-21 i do obviously it depends on what you're using it for and if you have a little bit bigger of a budget you know, you can spend a couple extra dollars, but if you're really looking for an entry level uh, camera to just get you by, whether you want to take some family pictures and you don't want to bring your super expensive camera, or you're just, like I said, learning how cameras work, I think this is the good one for you. Um, really depends on what you need. And uh, yeah, so it's really up to you. Watch as many videos as you can. And uh, yeah, do your research and I don't know. I'm really happy I did and I love this game. So that's my little intake on it. Uh, this being said, show some love. I put a lot of work into these videos. As usual, we're almost at, uh, I think it was three, three something. So we're doing good. We're almost there. And um, yeah, so let's keep pushing and see where this goes. See you guys in the next.